Today we're going to react game theory FNAF security breach. I know the biggest twist. I think this is a three from Matt Pat aka the game theorist. You want to see the video for yourself will be in the description below and his channel will be too. Let's get into it. More FNAF. FNAF security breach got its first trailer out during a PlayStation 5 announcement event and yeah. man does this new game look incredible. Gregory. Your friends are worried about you. Long gone are the days of just looking at static-filled still image camera feeds, my friends. And yeah. before we move on, can I just say how cool it is to see an indie franchise started by one man working at Dollar General rise to the point that it's now getting a spotlight alongside time-honored franchises like Final Fantasy and God of War. And not only getting spotlight alongside them, getting more views than nearly everything else in that showcase. Pretty That's much. awesome. Well done, Scott. Really, really well deserved. Now, based on the trailer, it looks like we'll be trapped inside of a Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Plex, playing a life-or-death game of hide-and-seek like against a killer. And it's that killer, Vanny, that I really want to dive into today. She's teased yeah, twice in the trailer, once via a bunny-shaped shadow in the opening sequence, and again as the final jump scare. Now, One, we've suspected see. for a while that she's coming, via teaser images on Scott's website, merch leaks, Easter eggs hidden throughout FNAF VR, all things that I've covered before in past theories. But the thing I I wanted to look closer at today is her backstory and her relationship to Glitch Trap. Because even though this game hasn't come out yet, and we honestly don't know when it's coming out, we do already know a ton about this new character. In fact, true to Scott's style of storytelling, we probably won't get that much of a backstory for Vanny in this new game. I don't know if you've noticed this about Scott's games, but important story bits tend to happen around the games rather than in, in the, the games. games. Let me explain yeah. with an example. In Sisterly location, we end with Baby being a part of Ennard. And if you get the super secret ending, you see that she gets puked up into a sewer. Fast forward to FNAF 6, and they're suddenly two separate entities again. Scrap Baby and Molten Freddy. To 99.9% .9 of the players, you would have no idea how or why that would have happened. And I can't blame them, because the only way you would know that Baby got voted out of the Ennard tribe was via the source code on Scott's website, as well as a separate standalone site FNAFworld.com. Oh, Just yeah. goes to show yeah, that when you're talking about FNAF, again. the game never really stops. And the thing is, I think Vanny is already getting treated this same way. The information about her, what is now getting her to kill, the big twist reveal about Vanny's true nature has already been laid out for us if you're paying attention to all parts of the FNAF universe. So if, unlike me, you don't have time to keep track of the 12 games, 9 books, dozens of ports, hundreds of toys, and a moon-faced animatronic in a pizza tree, well, that's why I'm here. Because all the pieces are out there in place for us, and now we're going to be putting them back together to understand the true backstory of Vanny, the killer bunny. Purple guy 2.0 before Security Breach comes out. Human. Recently, the game oh, FNAF so. Help Wanted human. got itself a mobile port. Like, Big whoop, like, like, right? We've already seen game. this game two other times before. Once in VR, and again in a flat console port. Don't get me wrong, yeah. love this game. Probably my favorite game of the franchise, but still, Scott, you ain't getting me to buy this for a third time. He totally got me to buy it a third time. So because this is a mobile port, a lot of the game has been stripped away. Gone is the intro sequence, gone are some of the game modes, but most notably gone are the hidden cassette tapes that tell the story of Help Wanted's failed development. Now, if you remember back to a year ago, collecting all 16 of those yeah, hidden tapes in, in the original game yeah. inadvertently assembled our latest villain, Glitch Trap, piece by piece. And once fully together, he was able to capture us in the game and presumably escape back out into the real world. Yeah. That's all gone now in the mobile version. In its place, though, yes. maybe something better. Immediately upon opening up the game, it becomes clear that this mobile port is more broken than FNAF World 1.0. Got textures glitching out in both the main hub and in the various minigames. Now, obviously, these are intentional effects. And by zooming in and tapping on them repeatedly, honestly, I can't say exactly what I did to do it. I just was there a long time pounding away at my screen. The screen eventually fades to black, and suddenly you're presented with everyone's favorite part of the series, an 8-bit minigame with rudimentary gameplay steeped in symbolic lore. 
Okay, it's actually more like 16-bit at this point, but still. We're told that this game is called Princess Quest, with you playing as a little girl lighting oh, torches to unlock what, doors and like running away from glitching bunny people. Glitching bunnies, you say? After making your way through a ruined castle and cemetery, you eventually unlock a long corridor that leads to a final lantern and, no points if you guessed it, Glitch Trap himself. Oh, yeah, the screen really goes that. dark yeah. and suddenly you're taken back to the game's main hub. Now, this seems Wasn't fairly like, self-explanatory, right? It's a reference to Glitch Trap in a game that had to eliminate him due to size constraints. But it's the details here that really matter. Not counting the torches in front of the six gravestones, which are very clearly references to the original five missing children plus the child who possesses the puppet, there are 16 torches in total for the princess to light. This isn't a coincidence. It perfectly lines up with the 16 cassette tapes that you had to collect in the original Help Wanted in order to release Glitch Trap. In fact, Glitch Trap only appears once the 16th one is lit further cementing that connection. But where things get really interesting is when you decode what Glitchtrap is saying. As the game ends, there's clearly a dialog box along the bottom containing weird glitching text, but you'll notice that the patterns aren't random. Some shapes actually repeat themselves. These right here, and these right here. It's actually a letter substitution code that spells out everyone's favorite phrase from the game, I always come back. And taking it all one step further, we can actually extract the audio from this moment and do some audio trickery by doubling the speed and then reversing it we get this I always come back, let me out. So in essence, Princess Quest is showing us a recreation of the events from the original Help Wanted. This does a couple of things for us. First, it basically proves 100% that this is, in fact, William Afton's spirit and not some sort of AI or code meant to replicate him. It is him through and through. Dude wasn't lying when he said he always comes back. He's got more lives than Jason Voorhees. He's also got himself a solid understanding of brand consistency. Afton always comes back. Secondly, though, what Princess Quest is doing is confirming for us the origin story of our new killer, Vanny, Vanessa. In the original game, the fate of Tape Girl was unclear because Isn't she sometimes encouraged us to collect the tapes and sometimes Vanessa. didn't. But here we get clarity on the whole story. Vanny is the princess with the lantern. She collects all the tapes, pieces, whatever, and gets taken over by Glitch Trap. This all confirms what we were speculating about before with Vanny in a previous theory from a year ago, that a young woman named Vanessa, Vanny for short, would be taken over by Afton to kill in his name, brainwashed or partially controlled by a spirit living inside of her. Yes, I hear you. I know. Oh, you don't know this? No. We hold the There is no miscommunication. There's also a similar conversation currently hidden in the source code of Scott's website, except here you see both sides of the conversation. Stay the course. I will. Focus on my voice. I will. Don't let anyone lead you astray. I won't. Have you selected one? I have. The one that seems to be selected is Gregory from the new game's trailer. Gregory, be still. I think she's found us. So, is that it? Just a recap of a lot of information we already knew? Are we just left to speculate about the rest until Security Breach finally comes out? Maybe. Well, no. You see, in the last year, there's been one final source of information about Vanny, and it's a big one. A game that I've largely ignored up until now, FNAF's augmented reality game, Special Delivery. If you haven't heard about this one, basically the concept is that animatronics get shipped to your home so you'll have yourself some new friends. Because let's be honest, Honest, fighting for your life against a malfunctioning robot is probably still better than trying to hold a normal conversation with a living, breathing human being. I think I've been dancing around this one just because the possible canonicity of characters like really Shamrock Freddy, was... Liberty Chica, and Clown Springtrap makes me have a nervous breakdown. But questionable uh, lore really implications of uh, flamethrower bear endo aside, this game has been seeding us more info over the entire last year about the history of Vanny and Glitchtrap. And it requires us to do one of the scariest tasks any FNAF game has ever required, reading emails. <laughs>
You see, the game will occasionally share you on emails that aren't intended for your eyes. On one side, we have ourselves the story of a company working on behalf of Fazbear Entertainment to disassemble old animatronics and scan their circuit boards into their computer system. And, just like Tape Girl warned us about back in FNAF VR, this causes a virus to spread through the system. Quote from those emails, Turns out that wasn't a glitch. We released a virus when we scanned that last circuit board. It's spreading really fast. We're gonna need all hands on deck. New email. Hey Jim, just checking in. I emailed you earlier this week about a virus caused by one of your circuit boards, which is currently spreading throughout our system and causing serious problems. Please contact me ASAP. Thanks. Best, Steve. So that is our glitch trap origin story. And to me, it's especially interesting because I think it helps explain something that dates all the way back to FNAF 3. Recently in the series, we've learned that the FNAF games are canon in the games. Now, that's a really confusing sentence, so let me explain. In both FNAF VR and the Fazbear Frights books, it's confirmed that the urban legends about murders happening at Freddy's restaurants are mainstream enough to have gotten some video game spin-offs. Not necessarily the FNAF games that we know, and certainly not FNAF World since everyone including Scott wants to forget that one, but games inspired by the legends of the pizzeria. In FNAF VR, in fact, we're told that they were made by Fazbear Entertainment as a cover-up. Fazbear Entertainment hired the game developer. Those indie games were designed to conceal and make light of what happened. This isn't just an attempt to rebrand. It's an elaborate cover-up. And looking back on it, I believe that we've seen those games. I think we've played those games. They're the 8-bit minigames from FNAF 3, Mangle's Quest, BB's Air Adventure, Chica's Party, and oh, Stage right? Zero 01. Heck, they might even include the Take Cake, Give Gifts, etc. minigames from FNAF 2. Those are the games being referenced in the games. I mean, they even have those sorts of cheesy titles that would come with cheap Atari-style games of that era. And how do we know all of this, and why am I talking about it now? Because of Glitch Trap. It's easy to forget, but the last minigame that you have to play in FNAF 3 features a glitched out bunny hopping... <laughs> I didn't even mean to put the pun there. Hopping between the various minigames. This is the first appearance of Glitch Trap. It's Afton Spirit trapped inside the circuit boards of these retro games looking for an escape. An escape that doesn't actually get realized until he's scanned into a new modern computer system meant to produce FNAF VR. Now, admittedly, this is a bit confusing when it comes to the timeline. We know Freddy Fazbear's Pizza was founded in 1983, as we see from the VR coins in Help Wanted. In FNAF 1, Phone Guy tells us that the animatronics have been around for 20 years. That puts FNAF 1 in 2003, not 1993 like I previously thought. And, based on the official description for FNAF 3, Fazbear's Fright and the discovery of Springtrap all happened 30 years after the closure of Freddy's, making that one roughly 20 2033. Now, we have no idea when and how Afton got a piece of his soul into the circuit boards, probably via his extreme agony at getting springlocked. But if this company is literally opening animatronic suits sent from Fazbear Entertainment and scanning the boards as implied by the emails, are we assuming that they opened up the spring trap suit, completely ignored the dead body inside, and scanned it? Just doesn't seem likely to me. Is Fazbear Entertainment rescuing the board after he was burned to death in FNAF 6? It's just odd. This is why I don't like to talk timeline with this series anymore. To me, the simplest solution here is that William Afton's soul is just in multiple places at once. Split like a Harry Potter horcrux, only instead of swords and scars, he's split between suits and circuit boards. And one of those iterations is Glitch Trap, stuck in the various game's codes until he's eventually released. But reminding all the way back to FNAF Special Delivery, there's a separate and related story happening in the secret inbox between Lewis and his fellow employee, Ness. Ness, as in Vanessa. It's Vanny again, my friends. Here we see a series of emails where Ness is acting weird, and Lewis, the IT guy, is honestly acting weirder because he's creeping on Ness. Here's a few highlights from these emails. Hey, Ness, it's no big deal, but I wanted to reach out off the radar and remind you about the company policy about personal internet usage. Certain words and phrases trigger red flag reports, so your last order got automatically sent to me. Basically, anything mentioning torture is going to raise the 
the alarm. If you have any questions about the policy, let me know. We could even get coffee or something and go over all the words to avoid. And now I've raised my own red flag. Good thing I'm the one who gets the notification. Smiley, Lewis. Hey, Ness. I wanted to see if you're doing okay. I appreciate your taking my advice about red flag search terms. If I thought I'd have to file an incident report on you, I think I'd just have to quit instead. I was a little worried. Maybe something is going on with you. One day you're researching flowers and the migration pattern of bees. Fascinating, right? And the next day you type in, how far can a human being be cut in half before losing consciousness? I figured maybe you're writing a screenplay or something. Always here if you need me. Lewis. Hey, Ness. So the word compliance by itself isn't going to set off any red flags, but the sentence how to induce compliance in human subjects and how to induce self-compliance did actually get my attention. I think the answer might involve chocolate chip cookies. Always works for me. I also thought it was strange that these were immediately followed by searches that couldn't possibly have any relevant answers for you. Did you search for help by itself? Anyway, my offer still stands if you want to go over the company policy. I'm free any day after work. We could grab dinner or coffee if you want, Lewis. Oh, Lewis, when you say stuff like that, it makes me... A sad panda. But HR violations aside, these conversations tell us a lot about Vanny's mental state. She is sharing control of herself with Glitch Trap. That's why we get references to her searching the internet for help. It's part of her psyche crying out for anything. Anyone who can save her. Anything that'll provide an escape. It's also why it's so important that Lewis calls out the searches for inducing compliance in human subjects and inducing self-compliance. That is Glitch Trap, searching for a way to gain complete control over Vanny, over her psyche. This further confirms something that we talked about in my last theory on Vanny. In that episode, we talked about how she's a reluctant follower, that Afton isn't in complete control. On Scott's Voices.com page, where he tends to hire out actors for the various vocal roles in the game, Vanny's listing was for a character named Reluctant Follower. So this woman is clearly a devotee brainwashed or controlled by Afton to an extent, but a part of her is actively fighting back, hesitant to do what he asks, which makes me think that in Security Breach, we may be able to save or redeem her. In fact, knowing that may help us out with the gameplay. Maybe it's a secret or a true ending condition. That, my friends, is what I believe to be the big twist that awaits us in Security Breach. Wait, 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 as I finish this video, of course, new statue just dropped with important lore reveals, so let's just talk about these real fast. With Gregory hiding inside of Freddy, definitely looks like my idea about gameplay being a version of hide-and-seek is absolutely confirmed. Or maybe Gregory is just piloting an 80s-era bear-shaped Gundam suit. Either way, I am totally living for it. As for the other statue that just dropped, looks like Vanny is gonna be taking a page out of the Afton playbook. The classic security guard by day and serial killer at night. Old habits die hard, I guess, but in Vanny's case, here's my question. Is she gonna remember it? My guess is no. I think it's gonna be a classic case of Jekyll and Hyde. But who knows? I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see Basically, what it is. I hear that some big things are coming to this franchise before the end of the year. And I'm not just talking about all that cool new merch we dropped. Which, as one last reminder, is all available right below this video. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. I feel like there can be a chance of this being a high seat game. So, I don't know. If I go back, where is it? The statues that I, was, that I saw. That was kind of confusing to me because I thought there was two separate people. Because, I mean, you would think that she's, uh, she's a guard who's hiding from someone else. So I thought they would do different people. So I thought, but when Madako said it, like they are two different people. Even so, the security guard's name is Vanessa, and the bunny name is Vanny. Vanny is a short for Vanessa. So they could be the same people. Just like my pet said that. She is like she being controlled by Glitch Trap most of the time, making her his puppet and stuff. I feel like there's a chance of me of us going back and forth, maybe the characters. I mean, you expect us being in FNAF game, you play as a guard, 
but I mean, I feel like they are the same people now. I thought they two was totally different people, but now I'm thinking of it. They the only people, I should only females in it, so I feel like they could be the same people. And the names are similar, F Vanny and Vanessa. Well guys, I'm this video, I want to see more reaction video, gameplay, live streams, reaction videos. Make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss no videos, no streams. And I'll see you on the next video. Peace.